we will continue now with construction equipments. Okay, let us see the basic kinds of construction equipments which we have on a day to day basis. Okay, we, we, we are going to manage equipment, we are going to manage people, we are going to just get an idea of the equipment which we will be using. Okay. If you remember this slide was uh, uh, started with yesterday in the yesterday's class. Can you identify the type of equipment which is here? What are the equipments which are there on this slide? Sorry? Uh, we will have one, one, uh, uh, one uh, general instruction. Let us raise the hand. Okay? Let, let one person please volunteer to raise the hand and then give an answer because if all of you are answering it starts to uh, gen take the tone of a murmur. So, yeah. Hydra crane, okay, where is the hydra crane here? Okay, fine. It looks like a hydra crane, but this is a much bigger uh, crane with a very big telescopic boom, okay. So, usually the Denmark version of the cranes are uh, having this. These cranes uh, have very high lifting capacity and you are right, it does look like a hydra, okay. Difference between this hydra and this Denmark and all these kinds of cranes is the hydra can lift a block and move. Okay, but most of the cranes are not allowed to move when they are lifting a load. Okay, very few cranes are only allowed or permitted to lift and move. In fact, cranes are not allowed to lift weights when they are on wheels. You will see the outriggers which are there. Okay, something comes out, then there is a leg which is made to come out, the entire thing lifts up and then only they do it. In fact, if you look at the JCB, if you look at the JCB, also please come. The, the JCB does not uh, work with the arm, excavating arm when it is on the wheels. You will see that they lift it up off the wheels and then they do because the when, when it is mounted on springs it is so un, uh, uh, it's, you know like it can move a lot and a sudden movement can cause it to top lower itself okay, because the center of gravity could change. If you look at uh, uh, I think two question papers ago or last yes last semester's question paper I, I had taken a photograph from the Hindu it was an actual accident which took place because of uh, movement okay of course it was not a crane failure it was another it was a launching girders failure fine I am sorry I am sorry I am meandering a little but in any case you are right this is a crane there is a crane which is a lifting equipment what are the other kinds of construction equipments which you see here. Yeah. Yes, excavating tools are there. Okay. See, most of the equipment which we have fall under a few categories. So the excavator is one which will come under the uh, uh, for under for, for what shall I say for the ground work. Okay, or for moving earth, we require the excavator. Okay. So that is one kind of tool which we have. And also we have some other uh, dozers, okay, dozers and bulldozers which are there, which are essentially used to level the earthwork. Okay, so the, this all comes under the category of equipments that are used in earthwork. So you got lifting equipment, you got uh, equipment for earthwork. Any other kind of equipment is there here? Compacting, yes, there are huh? soil compacting equipment is there. And uh, you can think, okay, all the knowledge which you have of soil mechanics comes into picture when you are going to be uh, taking a job in earthwork. See, cohesive soils and non-cohesive soils require to have the same operation done, compaction. Okay, but the way a cohesive soil is compacted is different from the way a non-cohesive soil is compacted. It means that you are going to use a lot of the knowledge of soil mechanics here before you do it. See, I will give you one very uh, interesting example which uh, I have, which was uh, which was there in my personal uh, when I was when I was practicing. We were having a case where the soil we we were working on a uh, on a filled up soil, and we had to make a small cable. Or uh, gallery. Cable gallery is like one of the smallest of the structures 
which we design in a power plant or in an industry. And this was on a filled up soil. Filled up or engine, it was an engineered fill. Engineered fill gives you whatever property you desire. So I was of the view uh, and uh, there was a problem because there was a very massive conveyor belt running. So the trestles were very huge and that was below this made up soil. And a cable gallery was supposed to sit on top of that. And it so happened that we could not go and excavate 1 meter. If I excavate 1 meter in that filled up soil, I will reach the top of the concrete of the conveyor. So uh, my professor was also working in LNT at that time. So I ran to him and told, sir, what is the need that I have to bury my foundation by one, uh, this 1 meter or 1 and a half meters? Why is this requirement there? Because if I dig almost 800 uh, millimeters, I am going to hit the other foundation. And uh, I, I don't have any other thing, why don't I just keep it on the surface? And uh, he told that you cannot do that because if you are going to see the, uh, if you are going to keep your weight on the soil, especially in the beach you would have observed, your leg goes down and there is a swelling of the soil on the other two sides. Now to keep that soil from swelling, there should be something that keeps it down, that holds the weight down. So for that reason only you need that overburden on both sides. Now that was something, you know, I was a design engineer for, at that time it would have been at least four and a half years of design life which I, I mean which my title was a design engineer. So in spite of that, I did not understand the fundamental of this uh, keeping a foundation at a lower depth, okay. So like this, there are so many things which you would have learned, but then you would have forgotten it. Okay, so it is just that you know when you are looking at uh, earthwork, especially here, you will be having to look at a lot of knowledge which you have gained over a period of time, which has to be put into practice. Okay, so this is the this is one of the major things which you need to have. Okay, like the attitude to learn, irrespective of the subject. Okay, it could be fluid mechanics. You don't know where it's going to be applied when you are going to do a work in. Site, okay. It might be that buoyancy is a very important thing. See, we have some foundations which you float to the place where you want to work and then do it. Okay, You do not know which rule of buoyancy is going to be applicable at that point of time. So, any branch or any, or any of the fundamental subjects which you learn, I do not have to tell about strength of materials. Okay, Anything you do is based on materials and you have to understand the principles of strength of materials before you apply any of the designs okay because all your designs is based on that those principles only so coming back to this earthwork you need to understand what would make a cohesive soil get compacted and what would make a non cohesive soil get compacted okay now if i ask a question how will cohesive soil what would be the ideal way that you can uh, compact cohesive soil, what would it be? Or okay, let us say non cohesive because you would have done that experiment in soil mechanics. I given a clue. Sorry? You would have done something called uh, Proctor's light compaction, right? Why did you do that? To determine? density or is it optimum moisture content optimum water content okay so if you do optimum water content what happens that will be the maximum compaction which it will get achieved with minimum energy okay energy is minimum compaction is best if you go for cohesive soils clay or clay like soils you will use a sheepskin roller okay it will have projections which look like sheepskin, you would have studied it in all probability in one of your courses in soil mechanics. Okay. So you see you are just bringing in that knowledge into this field. Okay. So that is one of the kind of equipment we do have. Okay. So excavator beat an excavator beat a compactor, this is the work which it does. Please try to relate every branch of study which you are doing into the construction activity. Okay. Please try to relate it. Now, let us see any other equipment is there, we have got cranes, okay. so uh, we have got uh, earthwork, then there are other things which are used for hauling material, okay. the trucks, 
the, especially the last line is having the trucks. These trucks are almost as tall as the, the wheels are as tall as you are. It's even bigger. They are all mining dumpers. They can even uh, carry hundred tons of material. Okay, so they can be really huge. They can be really massive. Okay, so twenty tons, hundred tons, whatever is the thing, you can have a dumper of that nature. Okay. See, whatever construction we do is achievable only because of machines. Okay, it's only achieved because of machines. Usually, in a course of construction management, I would have preferred that you know we deal a lot of a uh, little more on machines. Okay, but these are the machines which we use. The first is the simple machine. Okay, the wedge. Probably, if you look at uh, the pyramids. The wedge might have been the most important uh, tool which they would have used. The wedge would have been used for cutting. Okay, it can be used as a ramp to take the things up. Okay, so the wedge becomes uh, wedge is one of the best simple machine which we have. You take any other other uh, any other other implements which are not powered, like a hammer for example, the normal hammer which people use, or any of the other implements. Okay, spades or whatever you may call it, shovels. All of them are also a sort of a tool which helps you do it. But with all these manual tools to construct Burj Khalifa, how many days would it have taken? Many times they say that you know many of the marvels spanned lifetimes. Two generations had to work on it before some of the marvels were completed. Okay, so you see that uh, it means that if you are going to start Burj Khalifa with only people, you are not going to be able to finish it even after your grandchildren are civil engineers. Okay. So, these machines help, it, help us a lot. The second class of materials which uh, machines which uh, evolved by the steam driven equipment. Okay. See, there were steam driven pile drivers. Okay. Pile driving was possible or easy because of steam which was there. But today, is there any steam based uh, machine? Sorry? Hydro? Hydraulics, correct. Today is hydraulics. Today is the age of the hydraulic drives. But at one point of time, steam was ruling. Okay, uh, we don't even think about rivets. Okay, when we were studying, at least we had a course on riveted connections. I don't know if you are having riveted connection in your design of steel structures. I don't think you have. Do you? Design of rivets. Okay, maybe you are doing the course now. But in any case, rivets are outdated. Okay, today rivets are not used. But at one point of time. The rivet guns were all operated by steam. You can see that in most of the cartoons, Looney Tunes and all those cartoons, you will find that you know some smoke is coming. That is nothing but steam released from the pistons. Okay? So, then we got a diesel powered equip, uh, uh, equipment. Look at the huge Olvo trucks, huge Olvo engines which are used for so many other things. You will see man trucks, okay? really huge trucks carrying very huge equipment in all sorts of weather. Okay, so uh, JCB, all these engines make so many of the construction equipment possible. Okay, even in fact, this diesel engine is so good for most of the remote sites where you know you require electricity. You use a diesel engine to run the uh, generators. Okay, the alternators or whatever you may call it. So then we have got the hydraulic motors and drives. As he rightly pointed out, today is the age of hydraulic drives. All the big trucks do not have an axle connected to the engine. Normally, the engines run hydraulic drives which drive hydraulic motors and those are what are connected to the wheels. Okay. Today, you see any equipment, you will find that only hydraulic lines are going to the wheels. The hydraulic motor is very compact but very, very powerful. Okay, all the cranes, or I mean, not I can't say all the cranes. Many of the cranes which you see are driven by hydraulic motors. This hydra, what we are talking about, hydra is also having only hydraulic drives. Okay, so these hydraulic drives are nothing but hydraulic motors, which uh, which are used to run the show. Okay, then the last thing is the electric motors and electric drives. I am sure you don't. I don't have to tell you more about it. Okay, most of the jackhammers, you name it. It's all done with electric electrical drives. The thing about these hydraulic drives and electric drives is you can overload it for short periods of time. Okay, 
which is not possible in most of the other cases. Okay. For instance, if you are trying to overload a diesel engine, it is quite certain that the engine is going to get, it is not going to be able to sustain, it will just go off. But hydraulic and electric motors are capable of sustaining short durations of overloading. Okay. They can be overloaded for short periods of time. Ah. Any other, is there any other type of machine which is there beside this which you have told? We are given about uh, 4, 3, 4, 5 types of machines. Besides these 5 types of machines, are there any other types of machines? What do you think of these machines? Knowledge processing machines. Today, we are in the age of the building information modeling. Building information modeling can put in so much of information uh, into a drawing, okay, into a model. We had uh, models of, uh, we had two dimensional models. Okay, when I say two dimensional models, uh, I mean two dimensional drawings, you can represent x and y only on a piece of paper. Okay, it is very difficult to bring in an isotropic view, uh, isometric view, sorry, an isometric view or something onto a drawing and still expect people to understand it. Today, we are able to do, uh, I do not know how many of you have heard of this VR in mobiles. How many of your mobiles have VR? VR. Uh, in fact, my mobile broke, so I am looking a lot at mobiles. So, what is this VR virtual reality? So, if you are uh, this um, Lenovo and all those mobiles come with some glasses for VR virtual reality. Okay. So, you can just imagine with a small mobile if you are able to do this with professional equipment can you imagine what can happen. So, you can really go through a building and feel that you are there. You can see a building grow in front of your eyes. Okay. So, instead of telling a uh, laborer do this in this way, you can say look at this, can you do it like this? That is the way it has come to now. An engineer can sit in the place and he can visualize everything how it is going to come up. He can transfer his three dimensional idea to somebody else. He can say one year from now, so much of the building or one month from now, so much of the building should have been completed, so on and so forth. He is building and information about time also into his model. Okay. So, BIM is now not only three dimensional, it is now coming to the fourth dimensional. You got actually they have come up to seventh dimension okay, where they keep adding information about each and every part. For instance, this air conditioner is there. What is the maintenance schedule of that air conditioner? What are the things which you should do if something goes wrong? So, instead of going and searching for the user manual, you are just going to go and pick that part on your uh, BIM or the building information model. So, once you pick it, it will automatically say, okay, it is now time for replacing the refrigerant or trying to check, you know, like clean the vents. So, this is what is the place where we are and these are done by some machines. Okay. These machines are now like, you know, so becoming so, uh, it just is invading our lives. So, we do not know where it is going to go. At one point of time, you know, nobody would have thought that this virtual reality can come to a handheld. Okay. But today, virtual reality is a reality, I mean it is come to the ground. So, it is going to come into your construction field also and we really, I really do not know what is going to be the thing, like you know, I am not able to predict or if I tell you what I feel construction is going to be, you may feel it is a joke. Anyway, in this course, we cannot be doing that, but please remember keep your imagination open, do not limit your thought, the moment you do that creativity dies. Okay? We want creative professionals. Okay? So, now I am going to go into what this construction management is all about. We have already done this in the previous class. So, we will rush through the points, it is just a summary. Construction management is maintaining a relationship with the client. Okay? You cannot go and uh, tell the client negative things. Okay? It also is there that you know you are going to make him feel good, however bad you may be feeling about the company, however bad you may be feeling about the project. You will not be ex explaining that to your 
client you will be trying to keep a very good relationship because you will want the client to be a returning client okay who is a returning client a returning client gives more than one order to the to the uh, vendor okay in that case it could be you if you are the owner of a construction company you want people to come back again and again to you because your work is so good your work matches the requirement of the person who is running the uh, who is wanting to buy the services which you offer okay the next thing is you will be having to solve interface issues between the various uh, disciplines what is this interface interface is a place where more uh, more than one discipline meet okay for example in this room the hvac guys meet with the civil guys or the architects to bring out a very good air conditioner okay that is a point of interface between the two if you are going to have a if you are going to do a foundation for a huge blower okay blower is nothing but a big fan okay for example in tunnels and all that we got blowers which blow fresh air into the system a blower might be looking quite huge you need to understand where the foundation bolts are going to be placed okay so accordingly only you are going to keep the pockets in your foundation you cannot say it's my foundation i will do what i like you make the fan to the knowledge we have to so have a good int, uh, good what shall i say relationship with the other disciplines so that the interface is good okay so this interface is nothing but the point where more than one discipline meet it can be a cable support system you cannot say i will give a cable support where i want you can you can probably request with other persons because you are making the cables run in the middle of the room it looks very ugly let us take it like this or you can say the cable bank is close to this side if you take it in this way you have so much of advantage so this is a sort of interface he might have had a different plan but then you are going to give an other plan which is better so you see this is another example of an interface in a construction project okay then you got to manage the resources which is available to you what are the resources human part okay ma sorry man part and then you got to look at the materials you got to look at the tools and plant okay you will also have to see for space which is a important resource why is space an important resource of ground which is available today may not be available tomorrow you might have excavated and put all the spoils on the site okay so that makes that space so much unusable again if you are going to have a site establishment it is going to be charged okay the bigger the size more is the rent okay so why do you want to pay more rent for something where you can probably you know optimize the usage of the space okay other thing is if you are having a large area you have to guard it more carefully you may have to illuminate it more to illuminate this room is different but to illuminate the entire tt it is a different story altogether right so same thing happens to the space which is available for you when you are in a construction project the larger the space <coughs> excuse me the more is your overhead so resource that also becomes a very important resource time is another very valuable resource okay we all look at many times we look at money only as the resource however all the other things also including time is money okay because if you are going to spend a long time in doing the construction job your payment is going to be affected over a very long period of time okay so that, that again becomes an issue for you when you go ahead with the job okay so the way you manage your resources very important the next thing is financial management how you get the money how you are going to send it and for this actually we are looking at the examples like you know whether you are going to borrow or probably if suppose you are not going to borrow you may issue shares and stocks or you may sell a portion of your property which you feel is not performing to your requirement and then raise capital always money is required for all sorts of things and please remember every activity which you do has an implication that you are going to make money out of it okay quite a few of my friends here okay they are all sitting together they are they worked uh, uh we are, i worked with them for uh, that conference amari ac conference okay so when we were working there for every aspect there's a gentleman called uh, yash here 
he is a very good person with money okay so the thing about uh, the reason i'm pointing out is when uh, when the money is handled effectively you will find that the project is actually successful okay the project gets successful only if the money is handled right so that's about financial management then there is always a little bit of risk which is there in every project risk as i told you is not being stupid risk is something where you take a calculated chance and then you take a decision so if you win you'll win big or you may be even making a big full of yourself then there's also this human uh, resource management people are required for a job please remember you may be in the final year so end of this year you may be looking for a job so somebody is going to hire you right am i right yes. yeah thank you <laughs> if you are so doubtful who will come here to us so somebody is going to hire us and 10 or 15 years down the line you will be in the hiring seat okay so you should equip yourself in such a manner that you come into this human resource management also you have to sit you have to think of the requirement of the job and then you are going to bring a person to your construction site he or she is going to do the job for you and get things done for you successfully that means you have hired the right person sometimes you have the other function also somebody might not be performing so you will have to fire the person or you have to make him terminate the services of that person which is also part of the job of the human resources okay please remember there is a person sitting above each and every one of us waiting to fire you okay so he may have hired you so if you are not performing they are also looking at firing you may be in the hiring and firing position but you uh, you will also be you know scrutinized by some other person okay then the last uh, thing is you know like you need to get a lot of permissions a lot of legal uh, requirements are there in any construction site so getting statutory permissions is also very important okay and last but not the least it is time management okay so these are some of the things which uh, we have when we talk about resource planning or resource management okay now when you are going to talk about equipment when we talk about equipment these are some of the things which we look into okay we look into seeing whether it is worth purchasing the equipment outright okay so you will either purchase it or you can hire it okay if you go to the chennai metro project most of the cranes have been hired from nagaland okay the cranes have been transported from nagaland to chennai and then it's being used in the project i don't understand why nagaland or anything for the matter but it means that the companies were not interested in investing in the crane okay so they are finding it better to uh, hire it so there is a thing where you know a company sees whether it's worth buying the equipment for unique equipment for a kind of project or whether we can just hire it out okay suppose you have the equipment you have what is known as the salvage value what is the salvage value uh, 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 for instance if you are having a crane for say 5 years end of the 5 years you can sell it at a much discounted price a uh, upcoming construction company may not have the resources to buy a crane outright okay but instead of simply waiting for you know the cost of maintenance you see this fourth point maintenance major repairs and overalls as an equipment uh, keeps go, uh, going on in its lifetime the cost of maintenance and the cost of overalling and the cost of ownership goes up okay uh, i don't know how many of you have heard of the bike called java java bike when i was 2 years or maybe when i still was in the fifth standard that was like the only bike in the country how many of you have heard of java or sd sd bike java bike rajdoot rajdoot yes today do you see rajdoot anywhere okay what happens to the cost of ownership if your small part goes in the rajdoot bike you will not get a replacement for it right that's what happens you know you are going to have a crane a old crane over a period of time you will have the cost of ownership increased greatly because the spare parts are just not available 
because the spare parts are not available to cost goes up. So that's why you know what we do is at one point of time they will decide to sell the crane when there is still salvage value. The crane has use of usable life but what do we do? Instead of retaining it till the last minute when it becomes totally valueless, we will sell it off where you got salvage value. When you sell it, you will get a new equipment which has better features. See for example, today most of the mining dumpers, they sport air conditioning in the cabin, much better controls, many of them are GPS assisted, the way the steering and all the things are uh, done are so impressive, it is almost like driving an Audi car, believe me the features which they put into the cabin of, a, of one of those mining dumpers has such a you know advanced uh, technology into it. Okay. So, the thing is you will find that you get a better equipment which is more fuel efficient and better which gives better turn around time and all that uh, when you go for a newer equipment. So, salvage value is, a, is the value of an equipment which is almost at end of life. It, it means it is not uh, having no service life. It has some life, but it does not have as much life as what a new equipment probably will have. So, you will uh, you will also save when there is a depreciation. The value of the uh, of whatever you have, you know, materials or this equipment keeps decreasing so much so that your tax also what you pay, it will also decrease because your assets are considered as much lesser. So, of course, there is this property tax. Again, this insurance is another very important uh, thing. Okay, so if you are if you are owning an equipment, you al also automatically are going to pay the insurance, whether you like it or not. I don't know how many of you have motorcycles. Last year they increased the premium of motorcycles. So now what happens? The cost of ownership is going up. If I buy a motorcycle to own it, I have to pay much more money than before okay so these are all some of the things which uh, come into the uh, equation of ownership okay so today we were looking at quite a lot of things about equipments we saw that the right kind of equipment uh, for a task depends upon the engineering knowledge of the person who is choosing it okay for instance earthwork not all the kinds of excavators or compactors can be used for all the jobs. It does no one size fit all. For each job, the equipment has to be chosen correctly and the capacity also, you know, the capacity of the equipment also has to be chosen wisely because the large capacity uh, equipment may be doing the work very quickly, but the cost of that would be prohibitively high. It may not be justified to use that for that particular project. Okay. So, that was one aspect of the equipment which we saw. Then we saw the uh, you know like you know probably a very 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 eagle eye view of the types of equipment like we were talking about the uh, types of drives the simple machines we saw about the diesel uh, and then the hydro hydraulic drives we saw the electric drives and we also saw a little bit about the equipments which are used for knowledge processing. Okay. Knowledge processing is also important in civil engineering as it is important for any other branch of engineering. Okay. And lastly, we saw the elements of ownership. Okay. We saw the elements of ownership. All this knowledge is going to come into one area. Okay. When I say when it is all going to come into one area, we are going to say that you know this knowledge is going to be uh, used to decide what is costly and what is better for a or profitable for a job. All the work which you do should only lead to profit. How many of you are going to work for uh, no profit in construction? We are all contractors here. Please remember the reason a con contract system is uh, successful is only because you have a chance to make money. Okay. If you are not making money in a contract, then there is something seriously wrong with Okay. So, I hope that you found this uh, lecture useful. We will continue in the next class because I actually wanted to take some of the equipment. I wanted to show some photographs and show some things, but I do not have uh, time now. We shall do it in the next class. Okay. I shall stop this lecture now. So,
I uh, understand.